Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles back again. You're at Sonic Academy with a brand new how to use video. Today we're checking out a pretty special EQ plugin from Sound Theory. It's a intelligent dynamic equalizer. It's called Gulfus. Let's jump in and check it out. Cheers. Right, so here we have the GUI for Gulfos, pretty neat looking plugin. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, a lot of it happens underneath the hood um, and pretty impressive, I've got to say. Um, fairly simple controls. We'll run through some of them in just a sec. Uh, we're going to look at it in two different instances, uh, one on single channels, um, a kick and a bass, and then also on a full mixed track just to hear. I find this very useful in mastering um, situations as well. So let's just take a listen to this bypass on this track and then hear what it's doing. Okay, we'll listen to it enabled now. So these are pretty transparent settings. Uh, this is how I would probably use it in a mastering situation. Um, you can hear that as soon as it's enabled, the track sort of opens up and there's a lot of space available in the track, especially in the sort of low mids uh, bass area. Uh, it's cleaning up a lot of that low end and just making room for the rest of the track. Uh, so what Gulfos is doing is the algorithm is basically trying to dynamically equalize the track to kind of level out uh, your frequencies across the frequency spectrum, um, just thereby creating a more even mix uh, with sort of evenly dispersed energy in the track. Um, it does this with these dials here, the recovery dial and the tame dial. Uh, we'll dial in some pretty extreme examples quickly just so you can hear exactly what each of these functions is doing. Um, so we'll dial in the recovery first. So you can see the recovery is finding frequencies that are slightly lacking and it's dynamically pushing them upwards. Um, and vice versa, we can dial in the TAM dial. You'll see it's, in that case, it's cutting out frequencies dynamically as well. Um, because it's dynamically, there is an attack involved as well. So it's, it's fairly transparent when it comes to your dynamics in the track. Um, it's not a consistent EQ running the whole time. It kind of just, um, after the attack kicks and it pulls out, uh, much like any other dynamic equalizer. But this one is not giving you any options to select specific frequencies. It does everything automatically. Um, you can run the recovery and tame functions at exactly the same time. And you can see in the readout here the uh, amounts being applied in decibels both downwards and upwards. Uh, so when you have these running both simultaneously as well, you have this bias dial over here, which will allow you to basically tilt in either direction or favor one of the algorithms. Um, by going to the negative, we favor the uh, taming. And in the positive, you're basically favoring the recovery process. Um, so less taming, more taming, uh, basically. Um, you've also got a Brighton dial of here, which basically just also tilts the frequency uh, curve that's being applied and adds in extra high frequencies. Uh, we'll take a listen to that. Just turn down the recovery and the tame now as well. You'll see there's no processing being involved at all by turning on the Brighton dial by itself. You actually need to apply that to the curve after the taming and recovery is uh, being applied to the track. So let's dial in some of the recovery. And then add some of the brightness. And this can be added in reverse as well. So 
you can see it basically functions almost like a tilt shift EQ, uh, skewing the whole curve in favor of the brighter frequencies or not. Um, the same goes for the boost control that we have on the end. Um, I find, uh, especially when you are taming quite a lot of frequencies with quite a high percentage, it does sometimes cut out a lot of the bass. Uh, so there are two ways that we can deal with that. Um, if you indeed want to be cutting out a lot of the bass, bass frequencies here, uh, what you can do is add it back in afterwards with the boost dial. So let me just take this down and I'll show you what the boost is actually doing. Uh, this one does function without any taming or recovery happening. So you can see it's that typical smiley face curve, that loudness curve. Um, you can also do this in reverse as well to pull out lids more. I do find this helps adding in some of the bass, uh, but I've quite a few times um, when I've been taming a lot of this, I like to actually add it in with an additional EQ after that as well. Uh, something like the pass EQ, for example, which I use a lot in mastering. Um, I'll use Gulfos to tame the lows. And then add, for instance, a bit of that 80 hertz. Uh, the 80 hertz on this SPL pass EQ sounds really, really good. So I like to do that with uh, adding that in post. Uh, another way that you can deal with um, too much of a specific frequency being tamed like that is by using the filters on either side of the spectrum analyzer. Uh, by doing this, you basically inhibit it from uh, processing anything beyond that filter. So we'll take a listen if we're doing a lot of taming, for example. And we don't want it to be pulling out those lows. We can... We can inhibit it. Uh, vice versa, if we want to leave the tops of the mix alone and basically just focus on um, pulling out problem frequencies in the bottom end, we do it like this. I find for the most part, though, it does a pretty good job across the board, though. So I haven't in a lot of uh, found a lot of cases where I really needed to actually inhibit the fil um, the algorithm with those filters. Uh, now I just want to move on to another example now, um, and this is where I find this plugin really, really handy, is processing kicks and bass lines, because it just does a fantastic job of kind of cleaning up that low end for you. Uh, when I do have clients uh, that I mix for, um, one of the major problems that I keep getting over and over again is too much build up in that low end. Either the kicks are too long, they're too loud. Uh, the bass lines are too loud, there's too much sub-frequency going on there, not enough stuff's been cut out, uh, and the mix is just kind of very heavily weighted in the low end. Um, especially for stem mixing as well, I use these on a separate kick channel like I do here now. And just take a listen to the dynamics and the, the tone of the kick, how everything tightens up as soon as you use the taming uh, dial Yeah, So I've just got a kick from Kick2 and a bass line from Anna2 uh, playing. There's no other processing apart from a sidechain on Anna 2. Uh, just take a listen to the kick firstly as we dial in the tame percentage here. So you can hear that ringing going on in the, the low mids. And that really kind of emphasizes the attack of the kick and pulls out all those sort of uh, problem frequencies that kind of build up and make the kick a little bit woolly. Everything kind of tightens up nicely. We'll just take a listen to that bypass and uh, with it running. So that's without Gulfos. With Gulfos. And that's quite an extreme setting. We can also bring a little bit of the subs back in again. Off. And on. And we'll check it out now on the bass as well. In this case, we're going to use the recovery to kind of bring out some of the top end of the bass, the kind of attack of the bass and the high mids um, to really make it pop. 
Uh, so in this case, let's start up the recovery. Brighten it slightly as well. You can dial in some of the taming maybe as well. And let's just take a listen now with uh, bypassing some of those on the kick and the bass. So that's your kick. Kick cleaned up. Bass line. Both off. So that to me sounds fantastic. Everything's just pulling together nicely, nice and snappy really, really tight. And it's all incredibly quick to dial in. Um, like I said, the algorithm in Gulfos is doing a fantastic job of picking out those frequencies that shouldn't be there and just kind of leveling everything for you. Now, it's not a uh, fix-all plugin. Uh, you, you do still need to take care with your mixes, but I, I just think the amount of time saved in pulling out those problem frequencies, it really, really is a handy little plugin to have. Uh, in mastering situations and especially on this low end stuff obviously you can use this on high frequency uh, content as well um, pulling out problem frequencies on on hats you know if they uh, slightly too bright or too crispy to be able to back off on those slightly with this as well um, yeah fantastic little plugin I highly recommend you go check this out uh, huge time saver very very clever little EQ this so that's Golfos from Sound Theory. All right, guys, I hope the video was helpful to you guys. I uh, shall see you soon right here on Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.